So you've written a manuscript, but you have absolutely no clue how to format it for KDP eBook. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to format your KDP eBook. So stick around. Hey, Write Riders, it's Keith Wheeler here. And if you want to continue to get all the hints, tips, and tricks on how to make self-publishing easier, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, smash that little bell icon so you get alerted each and every time I put out something new. I want to make this video as short and concise as possible. So I'm going to flip the screen around and show you exactly how to format your KDP ebook. Well, here we are in Microsoft Word. This is my manuscript for One Bad Call. I'm going to Control A, which is going to highlight everything. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the font. And you don't want to go over the top as far as a specific font type. So stick with something that is common in your particular genre. So for mine, I'm just going to stick with Georgia. And the font size, I'm going to stick with 12. And the truth is, is when it comes to the ebook, the user of the device will select the font size that they want. So you really don't have to pay too much attention to that. So now that we have it all set up for the font size and type, I'm going to hit Control A again. And we want to make sure we set our indentations and our spacings. So we'll right click, go to paragraph under indentations. And for special, we're going to click on first line. We're going to change that to point two. And then for our spacing, we want to do zero points, zero points, and make this single line spacing. Click OK. And there it goes. It's spaced everything out. The first thing I like to do is set up my title page. So I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to click add page break. I'm going to add another one for my copyright page. Go to the top. And for a title page, really going to keep it super simple. You don't need a lot. Uh, I'm going to go in and let's just change the font size a bit. Let's make it 36. We're just going to put the title. If there was a subtitle, I would include it, the author name. I want this a little bit smaller. That's really all you need. And then we will center this. Maybe add another space. There we go. So now we're going to go down to our copyright page. What I suggest doing is looking and see what kind of copyright information is included for your particular genre. I have some normal text that I use, so I'm just going to include that here. And here, let me just up this bit. Uh -huh. Georgia. I want it smaller than what the normal text size is going to be, so I'll just make it 11. And basically what you're going to include is the title, the subtitle, or the series the copyright date and who it's copyrighted to, and then some kind of blurb as to all rights reserved. Uh, because this is a fiction book, I do have the, this is a work of fiction, names, characters, places are all fictional. Typically, I will put this at the bottom of the page, and above that, I will put some kind of call to action. For this particular case, I'm not going to. There we go. And now, here we start our ebook. We want to go in and we want to format all of our headers. I'm going to highlight the header. I'm going to select Heading 1. Now, don't worry about what Heading 1 actually looks like because KDP is going to take care of all that when it uploads it. Again, select Heading 1. In between each heading, we're going to insert a page break. Now, if you want your headings to be centered, you can go and center them. And now, after you've gone through and selected all of your chapter headings, and set them as heading one and you've included a page break before that particular chapter then you're going to go back to the top right after your copyright page and you're going to insert another page break now that we've added the page break we want to add in our own table of contents we don't want to use a table of contents that's built into word because kdp just doesn't like it from time to time so just to avoid any issues we're going to make our own basically you're just going to type in or copy and paste if you have them somewhere else, the chapter titles. And then I'm going to highlight the first one, which is Morning Fires. Right click on it, link. And I'll make sure it says place in this document. And it's gonna list all the chapter titles that we selected headings one for. So I'm just gonna click on the first one, Morning Fires. 
And there it goes, it's now hyperlinked. Do this for the next one, right click, link, worst possible scenarios, morning after, Obviously, this book is more chapters than this, but this is just to show you. And there we go. Here's our table of contents. We can enter and we can just type table of contents. Let's highlight this, change the font, make it a little bigger. Maybe I want to center it. I'll center these as well, just so they look nice. We can increase the font of these to make these bigger as well. Now, if there are other items that you want to include in your table of contents that may not be chapter titles, I'm going to show you how to do that. We're just going to scroll down. Let's just pick this phrase. It doesn't matter. You're going to highlight it, and then you're going to go to insert a bookmark. And you're just going to give it a title, no spaces. And so we're just going to call this sub one. And we're going to add that. And then now, if I scroll back up to my table of contents, I can hit enter, and I'm gonna write sub one. And it doesn't have to be the same title. Matter of fact, I'll just subcategory one. Just because I want you to see that it doesn't have to have the exact same title. And again, just like we did with the links before, I'm gonna highlight it. I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna click link. And as you can see, before there was headings, now there's also bookmarks. So I'm just going to click on this bookmark, and it will hyperlink me back to that section. So again, even if you want to include more things in your table of contents than just your chapter titles, you can do that by using bookmarks. Now I also suggest, since you spent so much time working on your book, I suggest that you go to the last page, you add a page break, and you do an about the author page. People want to get to know you so share a little bit about yourself. I'm not the author, we'll center it. You also want to make sure that you include this as a header because you want it to be in your table of contents. So we're going to make this heading one. This time I'm going to center it just because I want to. Now if you want to include an image in your ebook, whether it's for your author page or maybe you're doing a children's picture book and you've got you know, a lot of images that are in it. First of all, you want to try to condense your images as much as possible. With a paper bag, you want it to be 300 DPI. So that way it's nice, crisp, and clean. You don't need that for an ebook. For an ebook, anything between 72 DPI and higher is perfectly fine. So you want to make sure you keep it as low DPI as possible to minimize the file size of your book. The larger your file size, the less profit you're going to make on your book. To insert an image, you're just going to click where you want it. Go to Insert, Pictures, there we go. When you're ready to export it, you're going to go to File, Export, and you're going to export it as a PDF. Well, there you have it. Quick and easy way to show you how to format your ebook for KDP. You have any questions? Drop them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash that little bell icon so you get alerted each and every time I put out something new. Until next time, I'm Keith Wheeler, and remember to write right.